Hey, what's up, guys? Something a little different this week. A friend of mine came back to the game after a long break and wants to relearn it. We went over a replay of Skeeter playing Carrie Ursa together. Hope you guys enjoy, and let me know if you like longer educational content like this. Also, we're almost at 1K subs on the channel, so please subscribe if you haven't to help hit that goal. Thanks, guys. Okay, starting items. I feel like on core rolls, there used to be a lot more thought you put into starting items. Now there's usually just like, you just buy stats. So maybe some lanes, like if you're Ursa and you play against double melee, then maybe you can buy like Orb of Venom or something. Or like an early win lace, you know? Yeah. But I don't think you're gonna lose lanes because you have this build. Thirty seconds to shoot. Yeah, no, I use like buy the first two components of like just that item, like booty span or whatever. It's not something he showed really well, but um you understand the importance of like securing the range creep, right? Uh, yeah. So either you have a nuke that secures the range creep, or your support has a nuke that secures the range creep. Usually, right? Okay. But something you can do well, on Ursa. Have it. Yeah, something you can do on Ursa is you don't have to take Earth Shock. You can just hit the range creep early. And then your next attack will do like 80 damage, so it'll be hard for them to deny. Okay. So usually people will hit it like when it's half health, but here he hit it kind of late. First blood. That's something you can do if you're trying to secure a creep, is like hit it. Um, like for example, every time the creep wave is under tower and it's tanking the tower, every creep you want to like mark first with a fury swipe so then it'll be a lot easier to get the last hits under tower okay yeah i actually want to see if he did this intentionally push new lane for the lotus yeah There's a lot of creeps here. It seems like he's attacking the creeps like to kill them as fast as possible. Within reason. There's a cool trick he does where Rubik has a stun, but he goes to the opposite side, so he can't. Still got him, but most of the time it'll work. Especially in your bracket, like if someone's a bit late to the pool, you'll get it every time. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier, like to. Uh, obviously, you understand it's important to get the Lotus. But you can like apply like a gold to it. So like if it heals 125 health, that's like what is that? That's like maybe two tangos or something. It's like 60 gold. Plus you get mana, which is like a mango, so it's like closer to 100 gold. So then you can start thinking like, okay. How many CS can I miss before it's not even worth it to go for the Lotus? I just played the reason one, or I missed 3 CS. What? I missed 3 creeps for it. The one I just played. Yeah. So that one's a bit iffy. If you miss 2, it's probably fine. If you miss 1, it's completely fine. If you're missing the entire wave just to get Lotus, it's definitely not worth it. Oops. Why am I looking at this guy?
So all that Rubik went mid, so as soon as Phoenix comes by, they go on the solo offlaner. And like while you're playing the lane, you should be thinking of this like metric on the left. Yeah. Like this is what's most important before ten minutes. So I don't care really about killing this prophet. It's cool if we can kill him. I'm sure they'll go for a kill here because they know he TP'd out and then TP'd back in. So if he dies right here, it's really bad for him. But the kill only gives you like 200 gold, right? That's like one creep wave of creeps. Like if you miss four last hits, it's like the same amount of gold. But the more important thing is that he's dead for 18 seconds. And when he respawns, he has no TP. So he has to walk back. So that's like a minute where Ursa is getting golden XP from creeps. And he is not. So now he's just free farming. This guy even purchases smoke so he can walk back faster. 15% move speed bonus. <laughs> See, like that's the urgency where he's like, oh, sh oh, dude, this is like really bad for my lane. I have to get back as fast as I can. Meanwhile, Ursa is like almost level 5, getting a lot of gold. By the time Prophet gets back, he's gonna have like face boots. So the point I'm trying to drive home is it's not the kill uh, that necessarily like snowballs the lane. It's like you know what happens in those 30 seconds after the kill. He doesn't get to hit creeps, and you do. So it's always about the creeps. Always about the creeps. Even kills are about creeps in the lane. You get it? Because it's very important to know. Yeah. Dude, this guy is so sad now. I actually can't lane. So now you just go jungle? Yeah, I guess Prophet just wants to go jungle now. Oh, they came to gank him. Oh, they actually gonna die. Nah. Fine. Now he has to jungle. Lane is far up, so he pulls it. It's much higher impact to pull the wave and farm it than just to farm the easy camp. Now he gets to farm this creep wave. You can also pull the hard camp. Might work better for you, but I think he pulls easy because... He doesn't like see where people are on the map, so he's afraid if he hangs out here, he might get ganked again. So notice after a certain point. Uh, if you're in like a winning lane like this, you're not just farming the creeps, right? You have to farm the creep wave and also get one or two camps every minute. Uh, it's crazy. He stacks it and then finished the creep wave to do the pull. Yeah. Fourth rotate to him, it's easy kill. Radiant's 
mid tower. So in his mind, the laning stage is over. Even though he's still in his lane, this is just maximizing farm now. This is he's kind of entered the mid game. So it's how do I get the most farm? It's kill the creep wave, kill the jungle camp. If supports come to me, I can get a hero kill. But you'll notice that he was like looking bottom. Like he's willing to TP to get like kills on the map. During the laning stage, you won't see pro players like at least carry players. They're not looking around the map to see if they can TP or how the fight's going. But now he's like, okay, I'm just thinking of how I can have like the highest rate of GPM. So pull again. You will never see anyone like rank like 8,000 MMR and below play carry and do this. I don't see anyone doing this. Pulling with a small camp? Just pulling in general. They just hit the creep wave here. You kill it here and then they go to jungle. But notice how the small pull brings the creep wave here and it's a lot safer. So I'm gonna go back, let's see, at 10 minutes, he has 72 CS. Most of it, keep in mind, is like easy camp creeps too, so it's not like he has a crap ton of gold, but he's doing pretty well. 5k at 10 minutes is really good. Wait, so let's say something happens bottom, is it worth it? If you know you're gonna get like a kill or two, yeah, it would be. But then you're like abandoning the top. Yeah, it used to be much worse, but there's like things to do after the TP. Like, let's say there's a fight and they're diving like this tier one bottom. You can come. If you clean up two kills, then you have options. You can either go farm ancients. You can. Push in, maybe the tower is low, you can take the tower. Or you can literally just run down here and gate and go back. And even though you spend like 25 seconds walking and going through the gate, it's still like worth your time. Radiant's bottom tower seem better days. If you wanna play selfish and you like I said, you wanna like maximize how much gold you're getting. But uh, you enabling other lanes by like TPing and killing some heroes is going to give your teammates a better game, which gives them more tools to make space for you, if that makes sense. So if you just never TP, then you're going to have a lot of games where there's two cores on the enemy team that are super farmed, and then you have to 1v2 instead of like... Like, it doesn't matter how farmed you are, you're not going to be able to beat two farmed guys, you know? Strength in Dota is relative, so you can be really strong, but if there's someone stronger than you, then you feel weak. Thirteen minute battle fury is pretty good with phase boots and wraith ban. I would say probably aim. If you you can also try just brown boots. If phase boots doesn't enable like a kill in your lane, then try one game where you just go brown boots battle fury. You should be able to get it around the same time, like 13, 14 minutes. A lot of stuff happening on the map. 14 minutes, he pushes in the lane. 
Goes to steal their wisdom rune. Really good play. There's no way you can shoot that fight, it's like too far. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking what's kind of his reason for looking. Oh, he's bored, I guess. So now it feels like he's like in um, autopilot, sitting creeps. Yeah, so this that's another thing. Um, it's kind of like a lot of time you spend as carry and also other like roles like mid or off lane. But carry you spend a lot of time hitting creeps, right? So this is like the time where you don't need to like min max like what creep you're hitting or like oh I'm gonna put three fury swipes on the big centaur and then start hitting the little centaur. Like all of that you can just AFK your brain and like look around the map and like click on people. See what items they have. So what I think he's actually doing here, or what I see a lot of pro players do when they click around on the map. When it's a fight, they don't join. Um, they move their cam camera there just to see what spells have been used. So for example, I, I, I'm not sure he's like looking at this this game, but let's say he sees... Ember uses like three remnants in the fight, right? And then his team loses the fight, but then Ember like TP's top after. All of a sudden, Skeeter has all the information to just dive this Ember because he knows he doesn't have any remnants, right? So that's just kind of info you can get by looking at the fight. Um, I guess one thing I usually do yeah. is like check if they have TPs so I can like push tower safely or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be another thing he's looking for. Like a lot of embers when they're low, they might just place a remnant here and then TP base, right? And then go back to the remnant when they're full health. So maybe he's looking, if ember does that, then I can just stay up top because he won't have TP. But with the info he does have, he knows he only has like 5-10 seconds before people can start rotating here. Probably hits his tower. I would guess he does not hit this tower. With, oh, with catapult maybe he just stays forward actually. Yeah. Okay. I guess he recognizes there's really nothing that can kill him. It's the ultimate dispel. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a free mantle. Yeah, it is. Very strong. Okay, this is the point in the game where Ursa's thinking about Roshan. In your games, as soon as you have like, um, I guess what would be good? I guess you can limit test to see when you're comfortable Roshing, but in your games, people aren't just going to randomly check Rosh, right? So I would say as soon as you have like Battle Fury and like a neutral item, like Seeds of Serenity or something that gives you some survivability, you can probably just go Roche immediately. Now that he has Battle Fury Blink, he's like very aggressive about wanting to join fights.
Also notice his skill build. He just skipped the talents, went for all skills. And I think at level 15 he's gonna take this. Earth Shock applies to Fury Swords. Yeah. Once you have this talent, level 15, you can solo the Tormentors when they spawn. Okay. So you spam Q. <laughs> yeah. You spam Q, uh, charge up like one overpower, and then when it's back off cooldown, you can just ulti, hit, 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 hit. Overpower again, hit, 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 hit. You know what I mean? Do you actually, let me, I kind of brushed over it, but do you understand this overpower concept as Ursa? So, uh, there are some heroes like Earthshaker or Ursa or something like that where they like empower an attack or empower their right clicks and they get a buff while the skill goes on cooldown, right? Yeah. So, you get six attacks, but really the way you can like get the most value out of it is press it, wait nine seconds, then go in. All of a sudden you have 12 attacks, right? Gotcha. So that's kind of like how do I maximize my like burst damage kind of? That's how you do it. So the same thing for like Tormentor or Roche. You don't want to just press overpower and start hitting it. You want to press overpower, wait 9 seconds, then start with 12 overpower attacks. Against mid -tower could use a hand. You might see him do that in fights too, where he does overpower, waits a bit, then blinks in. And, and also, you you have this talent, level 15, so you blink in, you earth shock, you hit a bunch of times, all of a sudden they have like 10 stacks instantly. Oh, so he's posturing here. Why do you think he was like here and he walked all the way to farm this ancient? Uh, what do you think he's posturing? Um. Okay, any other guesses? Wait, so what was the question? So he was from Secret Shop and he went to Asia. Yeah. So why is he... So he's over here, he farms this camp. He's running towards this fight. So he's a carry, right? He has priority over farm. Why doesn't he just farm this? Morphling's low, it's not going to kill him. Why doesn't he just farm these camps? This is something you can do on carry, and it's called like, I don't know what to call it. It's like called posturing. You like are farming where you want to be, right? So if I don't have a TP and I want to have a fight near the Roche pit. Where should I farm? Near the Roche pit, right? I'll farm around here. I'm not going to farm these like ancients. People yeah. do TP top or something? Well, let's see. Because I have a theory, but I don't know if it's right. So we'll see. Well, it seems like Rude Mother is pushing bottom, so they probably tend to that first, right? Oh. So as soon as it spawns, he kills it. So then it makes sense all of a sudden, right? Why is he going all the way to farm this ancient? Oh, he wants to be in this area so that as soon as this thing spawns, he can steal it from the enemy. Hold Wait, I'll be I right don't back. fully. What's that? Uh, what were you saying? What's up? I don't fully understand the mechanic of torment, so I just know like it deals damage to you when you hit it, so it's like reflecting on damage that you're dealing to. Mm hmm. 
So it has this barrier, right? It has 1 HP, but it has 2,500 shield. So when you hit it, it regens at 100 shield per second. Okay? Okay. Okay. The next thing it does is reflects 90% of damage received to all nearby heroes. It reflects this damage as magic damage. Okay, that's why you can get like magic resist or you can like BKB and hit it and you'll take a lot less damage. Or actually you take zero damage because it's reflected damage. Reflected damage doesn't go through BKB. Um, yeah, and then it has like a little radiance, like aura, like slow damage over time. So the idea with the Tormentor is, so if you're 2,300 health, or even make it easier, if you're the same health as Tormentor, and you hit it in one hit and it dies, you will not die. But how it's difficult to kill is the more you hit it, the more it regens. So really, if it takes you a long time to kill it, it has more like 4,000 health, or maybe 5,000 health. Right, so heroes that can burst it quickly or have ways to like mitigate the damage from the reflected damage, those are good at taking Tormentor. So think about heroes like Ursa, who can do pretty heavy burst with his like Fury Swipe stacks and also press in Rage and take like zero damage during that time. Right? Yeah. Another so hero, you like yeah. And rage after you have a few first swipes. Yeah, let's see how he does it. I think some people just do it at the very beginning because they can basically get off all their attacks in the enraged duration. It's like that. That's when mature of your damage happens. Yeah. Accuse. Uh, Waits a bit for this. So it does it basically immediately. Because it's pretty long duration. You can get off all your attacks. Any questions about Tormentor? Uh, I'm good with it now. Okay. There, there were a few times where I tried to solo it. I almost died, like, it's so cringe. Yeah, I've died too. It's pretty bad. I feel like my games, we can go like 35 minutes, 20 minutes, we would be like winning and like, throw my throat, now we need to go at least one. Yeah. I think it'd be good to pick a hero that can solo it and I only have to rely on my team. I think Ursa is a good option for that. But Ursa you can farm with Battle Fury, you can solo both Tormentors, you can solo Roche. So you don't really need a team to follow up. I've been seeing this after in build and Ursa, like what's the idea for that? It's just to spam. Uh, so it's with the other facet so the other facet makes it so like every time oh while you're enraged you basically get like a buff and all the damage you take while enraged increases like the stacks of the buff so like let's say you get hit for 10 damage during enrage then you have a buff that gives you plus 10 damage so the idea with Octarine and Ags is that it lowers the cooldowns of your Earthshock with the shard. Remember, it gives you Enrage. And the ulti, that once you hit level 25 and get the Earthshock has two charges, you can basically spend like 15 seconds straight just Enraged. So that's like more for, oh, their team has like a crazy amount of disables. 
like you know I need to front line for my team I need to be tanky it's more of that type of build this one is more traditional Ursa I just blinking first one guy and we do Probably just end the game with this Roche. TP's to his team immediately. Okay, that's it.